Rightio, so this will be one of the least polished videos I'll ever put up, probably. Um, but it's been a big work, yeah, big week, um, as I'm sure all you boys have had as well, um, coming up to the end of the year. I'm sure everyone's flat out. And uh, we're the same. So just wanted to still take the time to go through the little uh, skid option that we'll have, or well, soft wash option that we'll have for sale next year. Um, and go through some of the features of it, why we've um, gone to certain things and built it a certain way. And uh, yeah, give you a look around at it. So here we go. Um, what we've tried to do is keep it as compact and as universal a, a drop-in system as possible. So uh, from talking to other people, it that seemed like one of the biggest issues when you're trying to add soft wash to a pressure cleaning business or when you're starting up and you've you know you've got a pressure cleaner, you've got to have hose reels, you've got to have hose, you've got to have all these things, and you're like, oh, I've got to add a soft wash unit. It's it, it's hard to fit it all all um, on your ute or on your trailer or, or whatever. So if we can make them smaller, in my opinion, uh, that was a big plus. So that's one of the things we aim to do. Um, so it sits here on this alloy tray. Uh, just before I get into the unit itself, this is a little add-on, which I thought was a good idea for box trailer users. Actually, stuff that. I'll go through that at the end because not everyone's interested in that. Um, so anyway, we've gone with a 100 litre poly soft wash tank. Uh, reason being, most of the time, personally, um, we're using around 75 litres on a job. Um, so 100 litres is going to be enough for most jobs. Sometimes you might have to mix up a second tank if you're on a really big job, but so be it. It's, um, you yeah, know, it's all about that, those compromises. Um, and at the end of the day, if somebody really wants a custom one with a bigger tank, uh, we can do that. Just send us a message. Onto the hose reel, we've gone with the Valley Soft Wash hose reel, um, mainly for the stainless internals. Um, we could have cheaped out and kept the price a little bit lower and used like uh, a steel A-frame, but at the end of the day, you're using chlorine, it's going to rust it out, and I thought it's it's a case of just better off spending the money, and this is going to last you many years, whereas a steel one, you know, in a few years' time, you might have had to look at replacing it. <clears throat> uh, comes with 65 metres of hose. This one's got a little bit more, um, but they will come with 65 metres of hose because that just works out. Uh, better with the rolls and at the end of the day it's pretty close to capacity anyway this is 70 meters here and there's not much more room and that's rolled up fairly neat um, and most pressure cleaners if you're rinsing your pressure cleaner you're going to have 60 meters so having the 65 on this is um, a good idea i reckon just see one can be running outside the other <clears throat> onto the replaceable items so we're obviously using the 200 litre a minute 240 volt pump that we've been on for the last few years now probably four or five years we've been using this pump um and and i love them i can't fault them uh obviously we treat them as a disposable item um but talking to a few blokes using you know um, bleach pumps that are 12 volt they're only getting you know three four five months out of them a lot of the time some are getting more so i don't know maybe it's in the rinse maybe it's it's in the brand whatever it is but personally with these pumps we've never had one fail um but i would suggest to expect between six to twelve months of life so with that never having one fail i've always just at around six months or around eight months i've thought well look if this stuff's up on a job it's not you know it's going to cost me a job uh, at the end of the day it's a cheap pump it's much better at six months or at eight months or whatever it is to just throw it in the bin replace it with a new one and then i'm good for another six to eight months um in the interests of, of <laughs> in the interest of science or um giving you guys the best feedback i can uh, my current one we're up to eight months and that's how it looks so there's a little bit of corrosion on that fitting there, but there's no noticeable performance drop, no leaks. Um, there are some stains there from previous leaks, but that was mostly to do with fittings. So eight months, and I'm going to run that into the ground. Uh, when it fails, it fails. I'll, um, I think in maybe next year I might carry a spare one in the ute just in case it fails on a job. But I, oh, yeah, I don't know. Who knows how long they'll last? We'll see. But at the end of the day, they are a replaceable item. Uh, you're using chlorine in them, they're going to 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 eventually need replacing. 
um, they're a water pump, not a chlorine pump. There's, in my experience, from what I've seen, doesn't matter what you have, if you're running, what well, we run through stuff, it wrecks it. So, um, made this easy as possible to replace. Uh, would have been a lot easier for us if we just put a nut under there, under that bolt, but instead we've tapped a thread through there, through the tray and through the bracing underneath, putting a little anti seize on that as well so it shouldn't rust up, uh, so that when it comes time to change a pump, you don't have to pull this off your trailer, pull it off your ute, or fart around under there holding a, holding a nut. You just undo that, undo the cam locks, swap the cam locks onto the new pump and bolt it back down again and away you go. So... Probably a bit OCD of me, but even if you if you only have to do this once a year, you still want it to be nice and easy. You don't want to be mucking around. On to the mixing side of things. So we've got fresh water input here. You just put whatever tap fitting you want on it, uh, whether it's 18 mil or um, 12 mil, depending on your supply hose. That'll allow you to fill the tank when both taps are open. Um, so fill from the bottom, so you're not going to get suds. You don't have to worry about unscrewing the lid apart from adding your chemicals. Then when that's full to your desired height, just flick off the water supply and you can start washing. At the end of the job, when it's time to rinse, it's as simple as opening up the water supply and turning off the chemical supply and you can flush there with fresh water. I've got this here. This is a double check valve. That's so that there's no chance of chemical coming back and feeding into the main supply. That's a legal requirement if you're hooking up I believe, um, and even if it wasn't, it's a good idea to be safe. So you're compliant and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, these little trays, this is just an extra sort of, had the idea of talking to someone who was working out of a box tray and I thought, you know what, what the heck are you going to do with this on a box trailer? Like how annoying would that be reaching down into it doing the hose reel? So I had a bit of angle around how to play and I think it's a bit of a winner. Um, we're not going to keep... We're going to keep these in stock. We're building stock at the moment. We'll be good to go next year. Um, but these trays, I think, inherently will have to be a bit of a custom item. Uh, we've made the leg adjustable, so in theory this should fit um, a high or low side uh, box trailer. But I just want to see how we go because I don't know how universal the posts are. And I'd hate to ship something to someone and they get it there and it doesn't work. So if you are interested, in, or if you do operate out of a box trailer and you are interested in um, our unit and the tray as well, uh, send us a message, we'll have a chat. Um, but yeah, well, I think that's about it. Any other questions, anything I haven't covered, feel free to ask. Uh, pricing will be in the comments section because, you know, especially the way the world's going, who knows what happens with prices. Things change, things go up, things might go down. Uh, I'm talking to a friend who's in the steel industry and he reckons steel's about to crash. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, have a good weekend. Hopefully it wasn't too long-winded. And, uh, yeah, any questions, send us a message and we'll answer them when we can. Have a good one.